In 2009, we look into the stars and know that the Earth revolves around the sun. But that was not always the case. People once believed that the Earth was the center of the solar system. When the church heard of scientists going against their teachings, they were punished. Galileo Galilei was one of those amazing scientists, but was he a hero or a heretic? Before Galileo, the widely believed theories were that of Ptolemy and Aristotle. What they said is that the sun went around the earth. That idea was fit well with the church because it supported their idea that God put the earth in the center of the universe. Everyone believed that theory until Nicholas Copernicus was born on February 19th, 1473. What Copernicus said is that the motion of all celestial objects can be explained without putting Earth at rest in the center of the universe, which was stimulated by further scientific investigation. And he published the idea in his book on the revolutions of the celestial spheres. His idea turned the ideas of Ptolemy and Aristotle upside down. But the church was so powerful, when his book came out the year that Copernicus was going to die, they put it on the index of banned books and anything that had mention of his idea. And they also could prevent people from coming up with their own theories about how the solar system worked. This was the state of scientific thought before Galileo was born. February 15th, 1564. As a child, he was very curious. Looking around his world, he noticed many future scientific discoveries, like pendulum motions from a chandelier and the regular timing intervals of a heartbeat. In the University of Pisa, his father made him study medicine, but when he overheard a math lesson, he became interested in math and studied math in the university, but graduated without any degree. Galileo Galilei learned from his childhood that you shouldn't trust what you've been told until you have tested it and proven the results correct or not correct. For example, Aristotle said that a smaller object would fall slower than a heavy object. What Galileo said is that weight didn't matter when dropping an object and that the objects would land at the same time. And he conducted that experiment on the landing of Tower of Pisa. When Galileo Galilei heard of an invention called the spyglass, he liked it and, and wanted to improve on it. And what he came up with was the first telescope. And one of his modifications was a spyglass that could magnify things 20 times the size that they were. And his first celestial object that he studied was the moon. He discovered that the moon was always changing and that it was not smooth but full of craters in the mountains that cast shadows. This was contrary to Aristotle's belief that the moon was entirely smooth. Galilei wrote in his book, The Starry Messenger, about the moon, it is like the face of the earth itself, which is marked here and there with chains of mountains and depths of valleys. And when he looked away from the moon and looked towards Jupiter, he saw three stars going around it. And after months of observations, he saw a fourth. He named those moons the Medicean stars. Here's what Galileo said about the moons of Jupiter. I had now decided beyond all question that there existed in the heavens three stars wandering about Jupiter, as do Venus and Mercury about the sun. And this became plainer than daylight from observations on smaller occasions which followed. By seeing the moons of Jupiter, he again proved Aristotle wrong because what Aristotle said is that space is always the same and those moons were brand new. His book, The Story Messenger, published in 1610, contained all of these findings, he, and it sold out in a week. Further scientific investigation led Galileo to the conclusion that Earth was not the center of the universe. Galileo wanted to write a book about these findings, but the church would outlaw them because they went with the teachings of Copernicus. When the church heard about Galileo's theories, he was schooled by the church in the Pope's decree of February 25th, 1616. Quote, Galileo commanded and enjoined in the name of His Holiness, the Pope, and the whole congregation of the Holy Office to relinquish altogether the said opinion that the sun is the center of the world and immovable and the earth moves. 
Galileo waited until 1624 when his old lifelong friend, Mafio Bar Barberini, became Pope Urban VIII. Galileo asked the church if he could write a hypothetical only account of a sun centered universe. When the church did not reply, Galileo continued to work on his book, Two Chief World Systems, which was published in 1632. The church was outraged that he wrote such a book when the church said not to support the Copernicus theory. In his, this book, he made the case of a sun-centered universe and did not treat it like a hypothesis, as he advised, but as scientific in fact. This caused the church to bring Galileo Galilei to trial for heresy. The church accused Galileo of being a heretic for, quote, holding as true the false doctrine taught by some that the sun is the center of the world. The trial consisted of Cardinal Robert Ballermine, chief defender of the church's beliefs, pa Pope Urban VIII, who Galileo thought was on his side, and Bendo Castelli, a monk and a follower of Galileo. In Galileo's trial, he made four depositions, or statements of defense, about his book and himself. What he said was that he did not intentionally mean to disobey the church's orders, but felt that he was stating his own theory hypothetically. In Galileo's own words, on his second deposition, For several days, I've been thinking continuously and directly about the interrogations I underwent on the 16th of this month, and in particular, about the question whether 16 years ago I had been prohibited by order of the Holy Office from holding, defending, and teaching in any way the opinion then condemned of the Earth's mo motion and its stability. It dawned on me to reread my printed dialogue, which over the last three years I had not even looked at. I wanted to check very carefully whether against my own purest attention through my oversight there might have fallen something from my pen that not only enabling readers or superiors to infer a defect of disobedience on my part, but also other details through which one might think me as a transgressor to the orders of the Holy Church. In that statement, Galileo saying that he did this unintentionally. In his defense, Galileo also mentions when he wrote the dialogue, he wanted to make both sides of the argument equal, and they may have overstated the case for a sun-centered universe just to be fair to both sides. Here is how the church sentenced Galileo. We say, pronounce, sentence, and declare that you, the said Galileo, by reason of the matter adduced in the trial, and by you confessed as above, have rendered yourself in the judgment of this holy office vehemently suspected of heresy, namely having believed and held the doctrine, which is fake and contrary to the sacred and divine scriptures that the sun is the center of the world and does not move from east to west and the earth moves and is not the center of our world. A myth about Galileo is that when he recanted his ideas, he, he was supposed to have said under his breath, e per si move, which translates to, and yet it moves. And that shows that even after his confession, Galileo still strongly believed that the earth moved around the sun. Galileo's sentence had three parts to it because Galileo was found vehemently suspected of heresy, of going against the holy scriptures. He was required to cur abjure, curse, and detest those opinions. He was imprisoned. Later, he was put on under house arrest, and his book was banned as well as all future publications. So was Galileo Galilei a heretic or a hero? I think he was a hero because he experimented, hypothesized, and wrote the conclusions about his ideas, which was basically the basis of all the scientific methods. And he also let logic guide his arguments. His legacy lives on with us today through farther space exploration and space observations.